Okay, this is the second video. Uh, we have this Rhino file, and you I mean, you're gonna have to do this several times, so um, it's good to, to have practice slowly. Uh, we can just uh, span this so we can play the grasshopper folder there. I'm gonna say grasshopper, okay. Uh, you're gonna ha not see that, you're most probably gonna be under this situation, which is like clean. You might not even have this element, and you need to go to file open documents and search for networks I think uh, in Blackboard it will be called something like networks mm, networks from GIS okay that's the one you're gonna find in Blackboard so go to Blackboard download this uh, grasshopper file that you will find under references and other files it will be on the top and then you select that once you download it and you say open. And you will have this uh, kind of a mess, this crazy row, okay? Um, I wanna talk about this during class, but I think you can start kind of a baking things as we talk. Um, this is where we're gonna insert our nerve, so that's why I said there's no stimulus in Rhino, but we did this already in the previous video. Then select here, all nerves, remember it's right clicking and set multiple when you do that grasshopper closes and then you can select all of the nerves that come from the the diagram okay you press enter when you're done it might take a while or not i'm not sure depending on um, what you're dealing with and i'm going to actually make this smaller so we can work both in grasshopper and in rhino at the same time if you have two screens remember you can actually work with two screens properly. Um, first thing I'm gonna go is right click here and say preview. Hmm. So it takes time because we have a lot of geometry. I mean, again, I'm not sure. Let me go back. Sometimes Grasshopper just disappears, but it's actually not disappearing. So go back and forth, it appears again. Hmm. Uh, at this moment, you can actually hide, select all the elements and hide them. Or you can even turn off that layer that it underlies that one both. So we don't need that because Grasshopper has given us this kind of ghosty understanding of the city. Okay. So we actually don't need to see that. But it's good to know that we somehow inserted all the documents. So if you select here and it turns all green, you're in a good uh, moment right now. Okay. So now you can go and preview again, which means hides it. And I'm not gonna, not gonna go through the steps, but basically what we're doing here is extracting like all of the points within that diagram. You see, it's kind of heavy. So you see how I'm gonna zoom in. We're getting all the points configuration for each of the uh, the volumes. Kind of preview because that's very heavy to deal with. So I'm going to just decomposing and sorting, meaning organizing uh, or putting an order on them. Okay. Uh, there's some kind of a selection process. I would like to talk more about this in class. I'm constructing a series of points, a top point and a bottom point. So if you actually go preview, these are all points located on the sea plane on the, on the ground. And then this is actually a preview of, sorry, I already had it, a preview of the points above. Okay, it, it's just a selection of all of the previous points I talked to you, you about. So anyway, you don't need to do this, just I'm explaining a little bit how it's built. If you zoom out, there's some areas where you have this kind of a purple. This is actually a grouping. So if you select some elements, you can say Control G and group them. Um, but I did intentionally, so you know where to go to start baking things. And the question is, what are you baking? Were you baking um, whatever it says on the top, higher circles? This is the first diagram, by the way. It contains all of these informations in this control panel. It's called slider panel. This up here is going to be the diagram tool that you have to do for each proposal with a control panel in a way. This is the diagram three. We'll talk about each of them carefully. And then this is diagram four, okay, isocurves. So I'll just go one by one, and they're, they're kind of building a, a pin in uh, complexity, but you can decide if you want to put all of them or or in one order or in another one, okay? So if we say higher circles, right click on the text in the center and preview, we get these circles here. 
which relate exactly to the points that were above. So you can actually turn on all the points here to see the bottom points and the top points. Now, uh, you don't need the points unless, I think you could bake the points, keep it in a layer, and then give them to the um, uh, Rhino group so they can actually start dealing with the points for their models. Um, this circle diameter ratio, this is like to get that the variation. As you can see, the circles are bigger the higher they are. So there's a relation between diagram and, and diameter of the circle. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going to the top, like even if it's not like double clicking, just seeing a little bit of, of that possible network that's gonna come and, and you can make that bigger, smaller. You can um, also double click on, on this V and change the top maximum parameter. If you need more, you can place here 20 or 200 or and then say, okay, okay. So you can go higher if you want to make them smaller, or you can even go lower if you want them bigger. So that was it's going to depend a lot on, on the diagram height. So I'm going to set there because I think it's a good relationship. Okay, I'm going to go there. We go. It's nice. Uh, vertical lines. I'm going to preview those. Those are the relationship between the bottom point directly to the top. That's quite straightforward. And this is called basic network. It's pretty much a triangulation between all of the points. It's not helpful at all, but it could be nice to have it there in a very thin layer. So how are we going to work this? Um, well, I'm going to minimize Grasshopper for a second, and I'm going to just create a series of, di of layers here. I'm going to say new layer. I'm going to call it diagram one. I'm going to actually change the name of this one, diagram two. Uh, each of the diagrams should have subfolders. So, for example, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it V1 is diagram one underscore and circles or top circles. Mm -hmm. Now, for layers in Rhino, you can select with the left button and drag it on top so it's embedded inside. And if I uh, maximize um, Grasshopper, you have it here in the bottom. There you go. I have it in double screen. Um, you can just see what I expect in each of those layers. So again, let me make this smaller over here on screen. It's tricky. So good. This is going to be diagram one top circle. This is going to be the higher circle. I'm going to right click on it and bake. Okay. If I bake, it's going to ask me, Hey, where in what layer do you want it? So we want a top circle and remove this. We now can select those circles because they've been baked and they're actually in that layer. You can change the layer color, no problem, to whatever color you want, okay? Now we need to start creating layers. That says V1 underscore, I'm gonna say vertical lines, right? Vertical. Now it's good to keep a good track of the names because you might, you're gonna give these ones to Rhino people so they can do their latest or their final proposal, no? Okay, so I'm going to right click here again, bake, and vertical lines. New. Now we're going to say, I'm going to say, oh, uh, V1 underscore O coins. And we're going to right click, bake, O coins. Okay. And new layer, V1 underscore. And as it says here, basic basic network is trying to do this minimize network okay good so we also need to i think we baked the points but we didn't bake the basic networks so right click bake basic network there you go okay so there's a at any point you can just save you don't really have to save the grasshopper you can even close it because whenever you open it kind of remembers it um, all these layers are white, that's why we don't see anything right now. Let's just start giving colors. Um, by the way, I don't see it because my background is white and I'll explain why later on. Let's make the points black. Let's make the network the Sabian one. Okay. Good. So this is a, a good moment to start thinking of what we have here um, and how we can start extracting this information to um, to Illustrator. No? So. And, and if you're separating the amount of work between different people, you need to actually make sure that you all are using the same 
isometric view. So when you make 2D different diagrams, they have the same kind of a lecture. So you can select different ones um, and start uh, talking to between each other which one makes more sense for the study. This one, for example, has a lot of lines right there. So it could be that you write the previous letter, but you can try different options to see which one is likely to make the line. I like the one we're having here, so I think it's, it's good. So just remember that all of the diagrams we struck to illustrators should be now, from now on, um, iso isometric, southeast, or whatever uh, condition. Or if you want, you can save uh, a view as your own, your own views, and save your own view. OK? Good. So um, there's a, an issue of duplication uh, in this particular diagram. So you can always say select dupe um, DUP. And it starts selecting some of them, but you don't want to delete vertical lines. So I'm going to, for a second, just uh, lock it there and delete. And I'm going to unlock it so we can select dupe again because it selects uh, different ones. And you lock again that one and delete. Unlock, select dupe. And it says it's wrong. This is the wrong one. So we lock it again and delete. Lock, unlock. Select do still select some select okay so what what I was doing is just basically that the vertical lines were um, um, superimposed in the same exact uh, position as the the vertical line so if you do the make to the from that point you wouldn't actually see any vertical lines okay so now we unlock everything and we select the element and make to the because it's lines, we actually don't need um, you know, hidden lines. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to use for views of the say um, maintain source layers. OK? Should not take much. We're doing an after all with uh, lines on this. So I'm going to go to top view. OK, I'm going to move it over here. These are very similar, so you really don't need those. I'm going to move them here. Or you could do it in Illustrator if you want. And we can scale this. I like pressing Shift, remember, so it scales gradually. You can also press Shift and click there and then say 2. So it's exactly double. So you always do the same thing. Okay, or 1.8 or whatever. And this is an interesting diagram of relationship and, and densities. Uh, this is more like a, an elevation of that data, and this is a three-dimensional one. Uh, you can decide which one is more important for you. You can keep only one, but I think there's some potential in seeing all of them to explain what's going on <coughs> in the particular neighborhood. Okay, so as you know, file, export, selected illustrator, and then fix. I mean, I could recommend that the vertical line is, for example, a dashed line, that the circles have a relationship of color with your heat maps, that, you know, for example, in this case, that line network should be very very thin because it's the next diagram incorporates it again probably the points are I, you could have just uh, eliminated the points entirely from from the selection because you know you don't really need them so um you can turn it off all points here let's just maintain the layer anyway um because again here it doesn't make much sense probably in, uh, in the 3d makes more sense for for example the um, the rhino people to use to embed some particular uh, forms or morphologies into them okay so this is the first diagram uh, you can um, I, I forgot to say to work on parallel view uh, on that make to the I think it's quite important um, and also that's it when you have this group of layers you can just turn off the main layer and you have all of them turn off hmm? so we still have the bulk here we can work with for the next diagram okay so go to the next video for the next diagram